So about that Mars mission, are we still on track? Let's bring in CBC Science reporter Nicole Mortellaro. Nicole, I was kind of surprised to see, boom, it's all gone. And then cheers, everybody goes crazy. What's that all about? Yeah, I think everybody was a little confused by that, but that's how SpaceX does things. You know, NASA is very careful, very risk averse. They will test, they will build test facilities all over the country. They will test the components over and over and over again. And that's because, you know, a bit of optics too. You, taxpayers are paying for this. You don't want to send rockets up and have them blow up constantly. SpaceX is a commercial company, and they can do, honestly, whatever they want with FAA approval, of course. Um, so what they do is they actually test their rockets by firing them off. Uh, so uh, the uh, Starship that we saw that it sits on top of the Super Heavy, that was tested many times um, before it had a successful landing. It blew up a lot of times. Um, they, <laughs> oh, yeah. And so that is the reason why. And, you know, it's, it's a very different way of operating for SpaceX. Okay, that's interesting. You know, it, you also talk about the money, and it's a lot of money involved, and, and the way that space travel and space exploration has been funded is this public-private partnership most recently. But with Artemis, there is something different. And can you explain that to me, and particularly around the idea of fueling innovation? Yeah, so, um, so first, you know, in the Apollo era, there were private companies, there were commercial, Boeing, you know, Northrop Grumman. Um, they were contractors. That's mm -hmm. what NASA has always done. But with this... Is di it's different also because the companies they're going with, NASA, for going with, sp with SpaceX and potentially Blue Origin uh, to go to the moon, they have their own interests too. They want to go as, uh, privately. And now SpaceX, with their rocket, with the, the Starship, it's an amazing thing. What they're going to do is launch a first Starship up, then launch a second one and refuel kind of by turning over. And that is something that hasn't been done yet, and that's something else we're going to wait for tests. Okay, all this testing, it all sounds like time, but the timeline for this is, is a lot faster than I think a lot of people would think when you're talking about moon base and then on to Mars. Take me through that. Yeah, so we, um, I say we, the collective we, humanity, mm -hmm. hopes to be on the moon uh, by 2026. Mm -hmm. It says 2025, 2026. And then NASA is looking towards the 2030s to get to Mars. Um, and they are working quite hard. They have plans already. They are looking at commercial partnerships already, looking at... at First, the moon, habitats, you know, even trash compacting, and how we can use that and then transfer that to Mars. So it's, 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 it sounds like science fiction, but it's coming. Yeah, that is curious. You really have to think about everything, like what to do about the garbage. Exactly. Um, all right, there, there is this, could we do it? And then the other question is, should we do it? Yeah, so, um, uh, you know, at the Artemis II announcement, the Artemis II astronauts were announced uh, a few weeks ago. Jeremy Hansen, Canadian Jeremy Hansen, was announced as one of them. Bill Nelson, uh, the NASA administrator, explained it like this. Because it's in our DNA. It's part of us. It's who we are as adventurers, as explorers, as frontiers people. And I really think that's a big part of it. You know, that's why there are people, we have settled all over the world. I don't want to say the four corners because Earth is not flat, but <laughs> you know, it's all around the globe from Antarctic to the Arctic, deserts. And we are explorers and we thirst for knowledge. And I think that's really what's driving us to expand outward finally into the solar system. I guess I would ask you just in our remaining time. We hear those timelines. We've also seen delays. Do you think it's realistic? Like 2030s is not that long away. I think probably, I think the moon boots on the ground will probably be 2027. I think it'll be pushed later. And of course, because of that, Mars. So I think you're probably looking at the end of the 2030s, but it's nice to actually have that in sight. It hasn't happened before. Yeah. We are part of history. Yeah, it's quite something. And I like the idea of the explorers, which humans have been forever and ever. Exactly. Nicole Mortellaro, thanks so much. Thank you.